Hello and welcome to another segment here on AWS On Air. And I'm Am Grabelli, one of your hosts for AWS On Air, developer advocate here at AWS, joined by NVIDIA and Innoactive, two of our partners. Very honored to be here with you all. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you first, Greg. Uh, please introduce yourself to our audience. Yeah, I'm Greg Jones. I'm part of the XR team at NVIDIA. And, and the way XR works at NVIDIA, we kind of are a horizontal through the company that supports XR use in all the verticals. So manufacturing, M&E, what have you. If they have a XR problem or partners there have a need, we try to develop an answer or a product or a platform for that space. And Very I nice. lead the Graham. product team in that oh. group. Yeah. Yeah. No Go worries. Yeah. Graham. Cool. Yeah, hi, I'm Graham Breen. I'm from um, Interactive. Um, later, I'm going to be talking about um, Interactive Portal, our product that uses NVIDIA's technology, AWS's cloud, and we deliver VR stream into our customers all around the world. But we'll go into far more detail on that later. All right, I'm excited. So uh, XR, right, uh, that I believe encompasses both VR and AR. Uh, tell me if I'm missing anything there. Those are yeah, the throw, two. Yeah, throw it. Throw in mixed reality, MR, right? So mixed we've, reality. We've got a new, a new entry. Yeah, yeah. Recently. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I'm probably most familiar personally with VR. I, I did um, one of these experiences, uh, The Void is what it's called, uh, out in, in Vegas, and I did one at Disney as well. And uh, when I did it, it had a huge backpack that you put on, kind of heavy. Uh, and my understanding, obviously, is all of the physical hardware that powers the headset was in that backpack. Now with Cloud XR, right? Um, there's no backpack, right? You don't need a backpack. Exactly. Exactly. So, what's Cloud XR taking care of that 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 backpack uh, that I had to put on was doing, Greg? Well, you can think of you know that experience you had with the Void, whether it was their Star Wars experience or another one of the experiences to make that photo real, right? Use high definition models, all that type of stuff, get high frame rates. You need a pretty significant GPU, right? And, and NVIDIA makes those GPUs. That GPU was held in that computer on your backpack. And, and you know, all the heat that goes along with the fast acting, the high frequency GPU is, is part of that backpack also. So really, not the ideal way to experience an immersive environment by having a, a big heater on your back. So what Cloud XR does. I was does, warm. You're right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the, I, the reason that yeah. that GPU is so close to you is when we make a frame to fit your head pose in VR, that frame has to get to the head really closely to the time it learned about that head pose. So if I give you a frame in front of your eyes, right? I'm replacing your entire world with VR. So right. if, if you move your head to the right and your world stays to the left, you're gonna get really ill really quickly, right? Visual vestibular systems say, hey, that, that's not right. I've probably been poisoned. And that's why my senses aren't agreeing. I need to empty my stomach, right? So that's kind of the reaction we're trying to avoid. And so we basically put that backpack on, give you a cable, and that frame can get to your headset according to your head movement within 20 milliseconds. Okay. So, so that, well, we want to eliminate the backpack and that cable. So we moved the GPU up into the cloud. Now, obviously, our network ping time is more than 20 milliseconds typically, right? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, even if we're in a corporate network, we're, we're already starting to get, you know, big ping, ping times. So, so what we do with CloudXR is we use really standard type of algorithms. One is called pose prediction. So as you move your head and your head pose is taken and sent to the server to render a frame, we're going to guess how much latency is in the system, and we're going to move that pose a little bit according to what our guess of latency is. So we're going to predict your pose by the time we hand you back that frame, if it's 50 milliseconds, we're going to say, I'm guessing the user's head's going to move this much in 50 milliseconds. So we oh, predict the pose. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a... I mean, the, I mean, if you, you start out at a head pose over here, you know, you're not probably likely to have a head pose all the way over here, right? Not Unless within 50 nothing. milliseconds, right? Right, so, exactly. Yeah, they are short short time predictions, which is right. handy. 
if if we had to do five minutes, who knows, right? But, oh, but yeah, within fifty, true. yeah, within fifty milliseconds, we're okay. And so we predict that pose. We're going to get that prediction a little bit wrong, right? There's no doubt. So when that frame comes back to the headset, the the runtime in the in the headset will say, "How old is this frame?" Right? What? Where's where's my current head position? And we'll say, "Okay, your current head position is a little different than the pose we're using on this frame." So we're going to warp the frame slightly on the headset. So there's a G. Do a quick warp on this frame to fit that pose exactly. That warp, since it's local on the headset, takes about four milliseconds. So the, the user is not aware that we've warped the frame. So as far as they know, they have a four millisecond old frame. Vestibular system, visual system agree on what, what's happening. Everybody's happy. So that pose prediction and that what they call late latch or asynchronous time warp, uh, which is used in all VR systems, even the tethered ones, um, those two items make it possible to, to stream VR with, with you know, relatively, relative to 20 milliseconds, relatively high latency, right? Because we have a lot of yeah. stuff we're doing. We're rendering a frame, which takes, you know, 10 to 20 milliseconds already. We're encoding a frame, which takes another, you know, 5 to 10 milliseconds. We're decoding a frame at the headset, another 5 to 10 milliseconds. Plus, we're transporting that in the network and a little buffering here and there. So we're, you know, 50 to... 100 milliseconds of total latency in the system and we're hiding that with that post prediction and late latch basically that's incredible i mean so we we actually all uh and the audience too experienced latency in real time there with you a little bit greg uh and lost you for a second but just to kind of summarize i, I think what i heard from that was you oh. know you've you've got the uh head post prediction on the cloud xr server side it gets sent back down to the headset where it gets corrected uh, in case of, of yep. the prediction being wrong, which generally speaking, there will be some bit of, of wrongness to it. And then it's displayed to the user, all sub 20 millisecond. Is that? Yeah, the user, as far as the user knows, that frame is, you know, three or four milliseconds old. Incredible. Yes, yeah. that's, that's amazing yeah, yeah. speed. Yeah, it's really, it's really something. And, you know, I, I won't take... NVIDIA won't take credit for pose prediction and late latch that those were all techniques used by, you know, Oculus in the early days and a variety of others have been developing those. Just how you use them in the streaming architecture is is a, a pretty interesting a piece of work that the engineering team did here at NVIDIA. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And mm -hmm. for the record, it was the Marvel experience that I had. at. at, at OK, the, OK. I, yeah. I went through the uh, the Star Wars. I, so okay. there you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah, good. it was it was incredible. I have to say. It, yes, it a lot of fun. A one lot of the fun. most immersive uh, VR experiences I've ever had. Uh, very cool now too to, you know, see like that kind of level of powerful VR being yeah. moved to streaming capabilities too. It opens the door to all kinds of of but, use cases. I and that's say. that's the idea is you take your headset right. It used to be. I have to have a, a big uh, workstation right next to me with a, a, a big NVIDIA GPU. I have to be tethered. My tracking systems were all external, so I had to have all these little lighthouses up around in my, my room. So I had a dedicated VR room, typically. And now, you know, with Oculus Quest and, and the, the Vive Focus 3 and the Pico Neo 4 and all those, you put the headset on and you're in VR immediately, right? right. There's, no, there's no box to set up. You're, you're limited by the fact that it's a relatively low power GPU. It's battery powered on the headset. So if you want to get to those rich graphics like you saw with the Marvel Universe or I saw with Star Wars, or an auto designer wants to check out a full, you know, 100 million polygon model of their, their newest creation in, in photorealism, I need a bigger GPU than that. And that's where streaming really comes in is to get those photoreal graphics. Yeah, oh. there you, we we lost you a bit there, Greg. That's yeah, okay. Sorry uh, about that. Sorry no about worries. That. It's not my phone. It's me. I just I just go offline for a second every now. And then. Yeah. That's okay. That's yeah. okay, Greg. Uh, well, so while while that while Greg uh, sorts that, Graham, let's let's turn to you a bit and talk about Innoactive and on the role that you all play with Cloud XR. Um, you know, I, I I wanted to cover a little bit too in the Cloud XR 
set up, right? Uh, we've got the server side, we've got the client side, the client side obviously living on these, these AR, VR devices. Uh, the server side's rendering the audio, the video, maybe even some of the haptics data from, from what I was reading. And then the client side is actually sending up um, control inputs, right, from your controllers, the head pose like we were yeah. talking about. You were talking to me about latency, which latency, I, I'm, I'm a DevOps guy, right? Latency is a huge problem in my world too. Uh, I don't deal in VR or, or AR all the time, uh, but I do deal with latency all the time. Uh, but I loved how you put it. Uh, latency for me <laughs> is just an inconvenience, right? So if I don't get a you know packet return or JSON response back in time, uh, we throw an error, right? What happens when you don't have, uh, you know, the correct VR scene built and sent down in time for uh, a VR headset? It's very clear you get sick. If your yeah. world is moving at a different pace to what you're looking, it is not a fun experience. Um, especially a lot of people are new to VR. You do that the first time you try VR, you're not going to come back in a hurry. So we have to give a good experience, basically. Um, and that, that's where we come in using the NVIDIA technology there. So what we do um, at Interactive, we've got a product called Interactive Portal. And you're yes. right, it's um, on the client side. So it's using the technology there, and but it's integrating it into a very friendly front end where it's with a single click on a browser, you can launch directly into a VR headset, a stream. So wow. streaming down from from your local data center. And that's actually quite a nice segue to where we come in and what we've done with AWS lately too. So the latency, there's a bunch of factors that affect that. And Greg's already been through a lot of them, but one of them is just also physical distance to data center. Right. So for example, my local region here is about a hundred miles away. It works beautifully. But if I was all of a sudden gonna be another 500 miles away, you're going to start to slowly build up that latency and it comes to a point where it starts to create a bad experience. So we've started, I'm um, not, we've started, we have, we've deployed across all of the available local zones as well because oh. our customers are global. They're everywhere. So we need to be where they are. I was um, citing an example when we were chatting earlier um, where somebody's testing in Western Australia in Perth, but their nearest region is in Sydney. It's a few thousand miles. Um, it's not going to be a good experience if you are just running out of the region on the pure latency to stream VR. But with a local zone in Perth, it gives a great experience there. So it's about getting that bit closer to where the customers are, where their locations are, where their whether that's their factories, whether that's their design teams, like Greg was mentioning, or whether it's their customers. They're streaming VR into the headsets of their customers as well. I'm using it as a tool to sell. So that's what we've done. And we've, like I say, we've tried to keep it super friendly because we know that the world of VR is still new to a lot of people. Right. Um, and we don't want them to have to go in, play with the settings, select servers, all of that stuff. It's really, how can we make it as simple as possible? And so, as I mentioned, on a basic level, we look up where is your lowest latency? So we do a quick lookup of all the AWS data centers and okay, we send you to the one nearest to you with the lowest latency. So always about giving a good experience. That's awesome. So, so not only will it help you deploy it out, uh, it will also help you optimize where you deploy it out to as well. Exactly that. Exactly that. Um, it's all about the minor optimizations, one on top of an, another on top of another all lead into giving a good experience. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. As anybody who's worked with uh, anything on the internet, right? Building anything on the internet, those minor optimizations count, right? They they stack up like you're mentioning. It really, they really do. starts affecting the latency. So those things are important. Uh, but they're they're minutia. They're very detailed. You know, it's it's kind of sometimes difficult to figure out where those where those pieces are. So the fact that you all have built that in uh to to optimize for me yeah and thank you <laughs> and, and the key to this is um the companies we sell to we sell to enterprise customers so the companies using this 
They're doing it because they want to scale. They want to reach their workforce to train them, or they want to hold a design meeting, bring in people in from three continents into the same virtual meeting room. And to do that, we need to be present everywhere. So right. it needs to be available everywhere and super simple and easy to use. And that is, they're the two kind of, I guess, beacons we keep in everything we try and make. I love it. I love it. So uh, both products, Cloud XR and uh, Interactive Portal, are available on the AWS Marketplace. Is that right, Graham? Correct. 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 It is, yes. Cool. So I'm a dev. You just piqued my interest. Uh, I want to start building something in VR. I you know, clearly don't have the hardware to do it. How do I get started? What, what can I do? Can I just go out and, and get access to uh, either one of these and, and start playing around? Yeah, absolutely. So, can, yeah. I was, I was going to say, you yeah. can go jump on Marketplace, get Cloud XR, but you know, probably your fastest route to experience the one-click experience is the, the you know, active marketplace. Reach out, look at that, reach out to Graham. That's, that's where I would start, yeah. Exactly that. Um, on AWS Marketplace um, or interactive.io, get in touch with me. Um, very easy to find through there. You can just um, request the demo and we can get it set up and we can show it to you. If you've got VR content that's already built and you want to understand how you can stream it over the cloud to wherever you want to stream it across the world, yep, get in touch. Nice. Very nice. All right. Any anything else uh, before we wrap up here? Any any other uh, areas that I should go check out? Obviously, going to go look at the marketplace listing. Um, anything upcoming, or uh, or maybe a blog post that I could go look at? It looks like uh, Interactive uh, has a, a blog about how you support local zones, which we talked about. So maybe you could read more there. Exactly that. We um yeah, that was last week actually. So. It's um, pretty fresh news on um, on our website, interactive.io and the blog. It's it's all in there. And it's really about how we've deployed. We're deploying to so far, let me get the numbers clean in my head, 29 local zones so far. I think another 21 are announced. So it's going to be 50, hopefully by the end of the year. So there's hardly a pocket of the world that we are not within a very short ping of. Very nice. Very nice. Greg, uh... I don't know if uh, you want to talk about this or not, but I, I think you were mentioned something about Unity also before we started recording. That's right. So we have a, a new release of Cloud XR. We just announced at GTC a couple of weeks ago, and that'll that'll we'll probably launch that sometime in May. It has a Unity plugin for the client. Our nice. community of developers have said, you know, we're we want to develop really beautiful UIs and lobbies and such on our clients. And uh, we'd like to do that development in Unity. So we're answering that call with this Unity plugin. We're really excited about it. It'll also run through OpenXR. So think of it as a universal client for all these different headsets out there. And we're looking really forward to the working with the headset builders to you know, build a CloudXR client with them. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that you're listening to your devs and, and meeting them where uh, they want to be. That's That's something that... We strive Absolutely. to do it over here too. Uh, yep. Love to hear when it happens. So go check out that Unity plugin when it comes out as well. Go to the marketplace. Go see uh, Interactive Portal. Go see Cloud XR. Really cool stuff, you all. Thank you so much for yeah, joining us here. Yeah, thanks for the time. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Yeah, really Greg, nice to be here. Graham, we'll see you maybe sometime in the future. Hope so. Super. All awesome. right. For the rest of you all, stay tuned for more on AWS On Air. We'll be right back.